I got a bit of a problem, which is completely my own doing, which is why I bought this. First of all, what is this? And why is it so light? It's very expensive. This thing costs a lot of money and it's a cable. I spent over $350 on a USB-C cable. Expensive things are supposed to be heavy, aren't they? So here's the problem. I got this and I recently did a video on this. It's a Terramaster D8 Hybrid DAS. I had to unplug it temporarily because the cameras that I use in here for shooting were turning off. They were overheating. And I was wondering what the heck is going on here? They were working fine. Then I realized this is new on my desk. And while it's a really useful piece of gear, I got my AI models on there. I got virtual machines on there and I got cold storage for backups. So I got enough space in here. But the problem is this, this thing right here, it needs to keep the box cool. I should have figured this is a problem for a couple of reasons. One is it's blowing air back there, making my cameras overheat. It's also annoyingly loud. And I'm sitting here next to my microphone when I do my recording for my regular videos. And unfortunately, there's a limit to how long this cable can be. This right here is a cable that came with it. It's a passive cable and it's about a meter long, so good enough. But it's not good enough to be further away from my sitting location where I'm listening to all that noise. So that's why I got this. This is five meters. Or if you're in America, it's 16 feet about there. And now that I have this thing, I realize that I actually might have just made a mistake. But since I have it, I'm going to hook it up anyway and see if this works. And the point is to try to get this thing as far away from here as possible. Originally, I was going to put this on the other side of my office wall, but then I needed to drill more holes and I didn't want to do that. So this is my temporary spot for this box. So the distance here now is going to be if I do any kind of cable management is going to have to be more than six feet. It's probably close to 10 feet to over there. Now there's no metal inside of this. It's fiber optic cable. This company Corning, you might have heard of them because they make Corning glass. Inside of this little connector, there is an insane amount of engineering and it's a thunderbolt signal going from here to some kind of optical processor and then it goes to the other side not through electricity but through light that's crazy so i'm gonna do a test run i'm not gonna bother with cable management right now just a quick test run to make sure that this thing even works now i know what's gonna happen and i bet a few keen folks here in the audience know what's gonna happen too but i still want to try it even though i know it's not gonna work and i'll explain why in a moment I'm back at my computer and um, yeah, it's not showing up just as I suspected. And you might be wondering why not? Well, this cable here, it's supposed to be a Thunderbolt only cable and that's what it is. It's Thunderbolt only. A lot of these other cables support different standards like they support Thunderbolt 4, 3, USB. However, this one, even though it's $350, you'd think it will support everything under the sun. Nope, only Thunderbolt 3. For such a flimsy floppy cable, this thing is actually pretty impressive. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. Corning did not send me this. I stupidly spend my own money on this and I'll tell you why stupidly in a moment. At least I'm hoping that this other cable that I found is actually just going to solve the problem for me. Back to that in a moment. This thing is actually pretty amazing and I got to give them credit for this cable because they managed to make a really strong long cable for Thunderbolt, something that does not exist anywhere else. Thunderbolt cables are very limited in length. This thing is five meters. I think there's a 50 meter length too. Yeah, that's crazy. There's a 50 meter Thunderbolt 3 cable. It's 470 bucks. This is the one I bought right here. Oh, looks like they make a few. 15 meters is 380 bucks and 25 meters. Ridiculous lengths. I can run this all the way across the office. 40 gigabits per second Thunderbolt 3. So this thing is capable of full 40 gigabits, which is actually much faster, hint, hint, than that DAS is capable of. That DAS only inputs USB 3.2, which is limited in that that generation of 3.2 is limited to 10 gigabits. Thus, I think I can save some money, but I'm not giving up on this yet. I think there's a way to make this work. Are you tired of me dangling this like this? It's just, ah. Here's what I'm talking about. This cable right here is a USB 3.2 Gen 2.2, 2.2 X2, ah. USB is so confusing. This one's five meters long, which would be enough to get me over there. And it's only 58.99 only. Well, not super expensive. So it won't have the capabilities that I'll get with this cable, but it's gonna save me $300 and do what I wanted to do, add to the cart. But for now, I don't have that cable yet. I still have this one and I think I have a solution. This right here is a mini Thunderbolt 4 dock. I've talked about this one on the channel before. I'll link to it down below. It's my favorite little thing. It takes in one Thunderbolt 4 input and gives me a USB 3 output 
and three Thunderbolt 4 outputs. Thunderbolt 4 ports, I should say, not outputs. So the plan is simple. I'm gonna put this little dock over here. I'm gonna plug the Corning glass cable into this little dock. I'm gonna take the original USB cable that I got, plug it in here, in the dock, and into the DAS, and then I'll power the dock, of course. Hmm, well, it did create a whole mess of cables here, but did it work? Here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna take the cable, plug it in here. Is it gonna appear? Hey, look at that. There's my SSD RAID array from the DAS, and I talk more about that whole setup in the other video. And here they come, the HDDs, the hard drives, including the RAID array that I'm using now. <laughs> so as a temporary solution, there they are. It's not the easiest solution, but it seems to be doing what I want. I don't know, can you hear that? I think I can still hear it from here. Oh, that reading and writing hard drive noise is just, I thought we were done with that. Let's see how fast this thing is. I'm gonna select the SSD array and do a speed test here. Okay, good, uh, sort of good. It's giving me 984 for write, ah, uh, 640 for read. This setup is slower than when I had it on my desk hooked up directly. Any ideas why that extra speed is being eaten up? That's a little disappointing. Why does this work though? Well, I'm running a Thunderbolt connection to a Thunderbolt device, which is that dock. So this cable is doing what it's supposed to, connect two Thunderbolt devices together. And then the dock takes that information and connects it through USB 2, because it figures out that the device that's connected to it, the DAS, is not Thunderbolt and is doing the negotiation, whatever it does to, uh, to send the USB signal instead of a Thunderbolt signal. There's controllers on both of those things that do the negotiation and figure that out. So overall, a pretty expensive solution. And given the speeds I'm getting out of this, I may just have to do a NAS. And I've recently ordered one. It's on the way. It's not here yet. Let me know if you want to see that video. In fact, you should just probably subscribe right now so you don't miss it. Let's see how this other cable works out when I get it. Okay, I got this in the mail. What's impressive is that this box is a lot nicer looking than the expensive box. Let's pop this open. Oh, <laughs> this is a heavy cable. It's a five meter long cable. 20 gigabits per second, 100 watts. QC fast charging. They have to have all the keywords in the title, don't they? That's a heavy boy. What's not heavy is the price. So I'm going to replace this guy. It's just so fun. Like the metal ones don't do that. See, that's why I was so intrigued with it. No other reason. I know what you're thinking. You. Now this has to be an active cable in order for this to even work. And I've plugged in a couple more things in here. It's pretty messy. I know it. You don't need to leave it in the comments for me. So I'm gonna unplug the optical cable, plug in this cable, and then back here, let's take a look at our finder. Plug this in. Do I hear anything? I'm hearing the disc spin up. That's a good sign. There's the RAID. There's one of my SSDs, another, and then the hard disks are coming up. In other words, this $58 USB cable does the job. That is the job that I want done, which is supplying data to that DAS. Let's take a look at the speed. Yeah, good enough for me. In fact, this might be a little bit better. This is just maybe a hundred megabytes per second faster read than the optical cable was. And the write speed is almost there. Now this is going through the Thunderbolt dock where I have all my other drives connected to. What would happen if I go directly? First, I'm gonna disconnect all these and I wrote a little program that does that so I don't have to eject all these manually. This one right here, eject all drives. I actually discussed how I wrote that and all the details and made a video for it for the members. By the way, if you wanna become a member, there's a join button right down below. I make extra videos for members and sometimes they get to see the videos early. It just supports the channel and helps me get crazy things to test and sometimes I do giveaways. All the drives have now ejected. So now I'm gonna plug in this cable directly into my DAS. Boom. See if we get a little speed boost. Drives already started popping up. Hey, where's the SSD? Oh, it popped in and then popped right out. What the heck? What happened? Let's try this again. All right, there's the SSD. Disk speed test. What? It's disconnecting. Did I, what did I do? Did I damage something? Huh, okay, well. That's not good. I'm gonna eject them all again. Let's plug it back in through the dock. Make sure that SSD array still works. Out of here, into the dock, from the dock, into here. Okay, there's the RAID, SSD RAID, and it's working. Huh, looks like you get what you pay for. And if a three meter Apple Thunderbolt cable is $130, and this five meter USB cable is $58, maybe there's something to that. This has one five star rating. Could have been a hint, I guess, for me. It looks like it's not doing Doing enough of its own boosting to make this happen. Now, I searched for active anywhere on the sales page and I could not find any reference to this being an active cable except for this uh, e marker chip and that ensures safe and stable output current, which is probably not related to data transfer. Uh, and I also found this puzzling right here. This is a 20 gigabit per second cable, but uh, in this data transfer rate, it says 480 megabytes per second. That is probably a mistake, especially since since they claim that 
this can do 5k at 60 hertz and it can be an eGPU docking and they even stuffed this SSD keyword in there. Anyway, this is probably a low quality cable. Now, overall, SSDs operate at much higher speeds than hard drives and they may be more sensitive to signal degradation, especially over distances like five meters. So this could explain why connecting directly to the DAS, the signal might have been compromised, whereas connecting through a hub, the signal might have been boosted a little bit by the hub. I call it a hub, it's a dock technically. And then uh, the signal is fine on the other end when it's going through the dock. Also, SSDs might have stricter error handling protocols on board, depending on their design and performance characteristics. And they might be more susceptible to disconnections when an error is detected, for example. And this is definitely more likely over a longer distance cable. So we've got a $58 cable, which may or may not work depending on what you're connecting to it. And we've got a really expensive $350 cable, which may or may not work depending what you connect to it. This might be very good for monitors that are far away from your machine. If you have a loud desktop and you want to move it to a different room, for example, it'll also be good in scenarios like I showed where you're going through another transmitter that's going to connect to a DAS or just another Thunderbolt device, not USB. So for those edge cases, very good cable. This one, I do not trust and I would not use this one. Even though it seems to be working through my dock, I don't want to have that extra setup. That's not why I'm trying to save $300. But I think overall for my problem that I've been trying to solve, I can still hear that thing. In fact, the noise is amplified by the fact that it's in a little chamber and it's pointed at me. So stay tuned for a video where I'm gonna be trying a NAS instead of that. This is what I'm looking for. Here's an example of cable matters. I've bought their cables before. I even have some of their HDMI cables. I've been using them and they've been working great, but I didn't buy this cable. I should have bought it. This one clearly states active chipset for flawless performance, active repeater, boost the signal, preserving 20 gigabytes per second. So big difference. Now I feel like I owe it to all of you to get this one so I don't leave you hanging. It doesn't have the best rating. Let's add this to cart. Not Thunderbolt compatible. It's a USB cable. Extremely unstable connection. Will not hold a stable connection. Monitor will drop in and out. Not looking too good. Will not sustain video from dock without the screens occasionally going black. Not too promising. Let's see what happens. All right, it's here. Typical cable matters packaging. <laughs> Oh, this one feels even heavier. Gonna have to weigh that. This is how much this one weighs compared to the other ones. Please don't fail me. Don't fail me now. Might as well just go for it and go directly to the DAS. All right, all right. Let's bring up my finder. Here we go. Let's see. There's the SSD. So far, so good. Let's do a speed test. This one works. 1000 megabytes per second, right? 850 read. Wow. The almost $60 cable did not work. $88 cable works. This cable does feel pretty nice in the hand. Don't you make that comment. I know what you're thinking. I think we have a winner, folks. Now, this is my first try. Things might change if I start using this. Let's see how things go. If you're interested, come back here. Keep an eye out in the top comment. I'll let you know how things are going after a week. But this cable might have just saved me almost 300 bucks.